Heartbreaking crime, a 15-year-old girl is dead, and police say her father confessed to killing her. A man convicted of murdering his two-year-old daughter will be one of the first federal inmates to be executed in more than 15 years. Viewers of his Facebook feed were often touched by the affectionate portrayal of his father-daughter relationship. His posts were filled with words of adoration for his daughter, who he fondly referred to as his mini-me. His frequent declarations of love and pride were testament to his seemingly unshakable devotion. However, one event occurred that dramatically contradicted this image, leaving his audience in a state of profound shock. You have children of your own, and you see just the evil that, that people are capable of. It's just not normal. Greetings to all, and welcome to Real Crime Explained. Our focus today is on Zaria Jocelyn Burgess, who entered this world on the 23rd of December, 2003, as the child of young parents, Akisha Pope and Joshua Lee Burgess. Currently residing with her mother in Union County, North Carolina, Zuria is a sophomore at Monroe High School. She has been depicted as a cheerful, effervescent young lady, always sporting a smile and known for her active participation in the school's marching band. The thing she did, it was she had the same smile all the time. Despite the fact that Zuria's parents were no longer in a relationship, her father appeared to play an active role in her life. Evidence of their close bond was reflected in his Facebook posts. In a post dated 2015, he expressed his profound love for his little angel and the invaluable importance of spending quality time with her. From the snapshots of their lives together, it seemed they shared a typical father-daughter relationship. This is what makes the subsequent events both stunning and deeply tragic. On August 17, 2019, Zaria, then 15, visited her father's residence in Monroe, as was their usual weekend arrangement. However, this visit devolved into an unthinkable horror. The following day, Joshua Burgess presented himself at the local sheriff's office, intending to surrender. The dispatcher, in routine procedure, requested his name to check for any outstanding arrest warrants. Before she could proceed, Burgess interrupted her, stating that his name would not be in the system, as he had just committed a murder. He proceeded to share the gruesome details of his crime, including the victim's identity and the location of the body. The victim was his own daughter. The manner in which she met her end would prove to be even more heartrending. In a heartbreaking crime, a 15-year-old girl is dead, and police say her father confessed to killing her. The big question tonight is why. Tonight, Joshua Burgess sits on close watch in a jail cell here at the Union County Jail. He is charged with murder in a case that investigators describe as chilling. The police did not explain how the teenage girl was killed at first but a local news station afterwards reported that there was a collective gasp in the courtroom as horrible details of how the girl died were revealed during the first quarter. The monstrous father had choked his daughter before cutting her throat, according to the evidence presented in court. The cause of death was determined by a medical examiner to be a sharp force injury to the neck. Even worse, it was discovered that this crazed dad had done some really awful and disgusting things to his daughter tormenting her for 22 hours before killing her. Why would somebody do such a thing to his own flesh and blood? Many individuals have speculated that he was a white nationalist and that this was a ritualistic homicide. They based their case on Joshua's alleged Facebook activity, which shows that he liked anti-African American pages and followed a satanic organization called Serpent's Flame. He allegedly uploaded some horrific items on his page, including one in which he joked about cutting people, adding, I just really like cutting people. Oops, I misspoke. I enjoy cutting stuff. Many believe that this should have raised a red signal, particularly for the mother, and that she should never have allowed her daughter to be around Joshua. Zaria's mother was dragged all over the internet, with many claiming that she was as much to blame as the actual culprit for her daughter's death. That mother is innocent, one woman said. She should be called in for questioning, believe me. That man had been raising red flags long before this happened. Just take a peek at him. Other family members stated that Zaria was afraid of her father and did not want to visit him during the weekend, but her mother allegedly persuaded her to go. I'm not sure how factual that information is, but I think it's cruel to punish an already bereaved mother for something she couldn't possibly have predicted. Remember that this was not Zaria's first visit to her father, and it was most likely a court-ordered visit. 
There were no prior reports of abuse or evidence that Joshua would do such a thing to his own daughter. Joshua stated during his confession that he committed it to retaliate against Zuria's mother since they didn't get along. However, detectives suspect that his primary motivation was lust and domination. The sheriff described Joshua as pure evil, noting that the cops engaged in the investigation were touched by the heinous things he did to his daughter. The details of this murder are incomprehensible. What happened to this child has affected every officer involved in this case. There is no rational explanation for why this man did what he is accused of. Our thoughts and prayers are with Zuria's mother and family. Joshua was charged with capital murder as well as other major offenses. Despite confessing to the killing, he pled not guilty, forcing Zaria's family to endure a trial. A jury selection is underway in that capital murder trial, and as you can well imagine, this is going to take a while. This trial is slated to go for at least six weeks. This is video of Burgess as he walked into that Union County courtroom. The judge allowing our cameras there to take these shots just before jury selection this morning as this man is on trial for his life. The prosecution described the murder as particularly brutal, awful, and cruel killing of an innocent kid as the trial began in May 2022. After three weeks of deliberation, the jury took only three hours to find him guilty of first-degree murder. He received a death sentence by lethal injection, as well as a minimum of 76 years in jail for the other offenses. The sheriff issued a statement following the punishment, saying, Burgess stole Zaria from her friends, family, and local community. While we realize Zaria is no longer with us, we hope that today's verdict brings some closure to Zaria's family and friends, and we will continue to keep them in our prayers on a daily basis. While this is a heartbreaking situation, it is sadly not the only one of its kind. In 2002, a truck driver in Texas called Alfred Bourgeois made headlines for doing nearly the same thing as Joshua. Alfred had recently learned in May of that year that he was the father of a two-year-old girl named Jacarin, the mother of whom was a former lover. When he requested child support, he also requested temporary custody of the child, stating that he wanted to get to know his daughter, and his request was granted. Soon later, Alfred picked up the toddler from her mother and took her to Louisiana on one of his visits. He would also brought his wife, Robin, and two elder daughters with him on the trip. This was not unusual, since he frequently took his family with him on his rounds. But this time, the journey ended tragically. According to court documents, Alfred grew obsessed with potty training his daughter and would easily become angry and enraged when she had accidents. Alfred was making a delivery at the Corpus Christi Naval Air Station on June 28, 2002, when his daughter accidentally turned over her potty training chair on the cab of the truck. He became upset and slammed the back of her head four times into the truck's window and dashboard. At the time, Alfred and his family informed paramedics that Jack Karen had fallen out of the truck by mistake. When the little girl was rushed to the hospital, physicians discovered she had suffered a serious brain injury and promptly put her on life support. Unfortunately, the little child died soon after in her mother's arms, while severe head trauma was determined the cause of death. A medical examiner discovered over 300 injuries on the girl's body, including whip marks, healed scars, and even bite marks. It was also uncovered that some unsettling things were done to her prior to her death. Alfred was arrested and charged in connection with the killing of Jack Karen. Because the murder occurred on a military base, the case was tried in federal court. The trial began in 2004 and the prosecution said Alfred had been torturing his daughter for weeks while disguising her injuries with socks and sunglasses. Throughout the trial, Alfred maintained his innocence, stating that his wife was the one who had done all of these atrocities to the little girl out of jealousy. However, while in jail, Alfred was claimed to have made a joke about the incident to another convict, saying, and I quote, that expletive baby's head got as big as a watermelon. After thrashing Jacaran with a plastic baseball bat, his wife, Robin, who testified that she feared her husband and had previously obtained restraining orders against him, also told the court that Alfred had ordered her and her children to report Jacaran's fall from the truck to the police. But it was his nine-year-old daughter, who was seven at the time of the crime, who gave the most terrible testimony. Jacaran's expression darkened as her father bashed her half-sister's head on the truck, she informed the jurors. 
On March 16, 2004, the jury deliberated for less than two hours before finding him guilty of all charges and recommending the death penalty. A man convicted of murdering his two-year-old daughter will be one of the first federal inmates to be executed in more than 15 years. Alfred Bourgeois was convicted back in 2002 in the death of his daughter, who was killed at NAS Corpus Christi. He told investigators the infant had fallen five feet out of his truck onto the pavement at the Naval Air Station. An autopsy later reported the child had been physically and sexually abused. Even Alfred has been on the run for 15 years. Then, on December 11th, 2020, at the age of 56, he was executed by lethal injection. In his final remarks, he made no apologies for his acts and instead insisted that he did not murder or harm his infant girl, stating, I ask God to pardon those who planned and schemed against me and planted false evidence. I did not commit this crime. Jacaran's distraught family issued a statement following his death, saying, Jacqueline lost her life brutally to a monster who lived for 18 years after the crime. A child should not have to go through what she went through at the time. None of us could have predicted that she would return after a summer visit in a casket. Now we can begin the healing process. It should not have taken us 18 years to get justice for our angel, she said. She will be forever loved and missed. Yeah, yeah we love you. What are your thoughts on these cases? Please share your ideas in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thank you very much.